Hi everyone and welcome to Sip and Sync with Azure. In this episode, we are handling a very important, crucial topic that you all have in mind. How is software engineering changing with AI? And I've got Govin here who's going to show us a bunch of demos. Hey Govin, I'm very excited for this. Hey Priyanka, uh, nice to be back again. Great. Okay, so let's start with software development lifecycle. How is software engineering changing? What is your perspective? Yeah. Uh, th th thanks for this. I mean, this topic is really top of mind for you know, almost every software engineer. Uh, there's a lot of anxiety and nervousness, but I actually have good news. I think there's going to be a lot more software engineers because I think you have to focus on where you know AI is bottlenecked on, and that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to show it uh, concretely with a task that is very, um, I, I think a task that you really care about, which yeah, is AI tours <laughs> Yes. that you've been going around and doing a great job with keynotes. Thank you. So we're going to help you do that and we're going to assign to these agents. Uh, great. Okay. So that is a very concrete use case. I'm excited to see the first step. The, my, my usual first step is going in and doing the research and to build the presentation and the demos. Right. How do we begin in this case? Yeah, so uh, before we kind of go concrete, I just want to kind of zoom out and give you uh, the picture that we're going to like get concrete with here. So at high level, like if you think about, okay, you know, the models are going to get better, uh, you know, this whole model forward uh, approach means that as these models can plan, uh, reason, and tool call better and better, uh, you can start to trust that these models can asynchronously work on tasks, long running tasks on their own, yep. right? Which naturally means that you can have, you know, five or six, uh, you know, let's say user stories being done by, you know, an asynchronous agent at the same time. However, the humans uh, and the software engineers are gonna evolve to become tech leads. So in this graphic, what you see is, you know, the pre and the post of what the agents uh, do uh, are gonna be bottlenecked. And that's where, you know, software engineers are going to spend a lot more time. And for example, in this graphic, what you see is first, you need to be able to understand. You need to be able to synthesize and decompose the user's need and work backwards. And for that, you know, again, you can employ agents. For example, researcher agent from N365 Copilot uh, allows you to synthesize from different, as different aspects of the work yeah. and create rich PRDs, product requirements docs. Uh, Devon's DeepWiki, uh, which is one of our partners, allows you to understand a code base in a you know rich and a systems thinking way. Um, we have uh, GitHub Copilot Spaces that allows you to do the same thing, and then you assign it to you know these army of asynchronous agents. Right? There's uh, GitHub Copilot Coding Agent. There's Codex. Uh, there's Devon. There's Replit. There's a bunch of them on Azure, uh, and then synchronously the developer can continue to work. And these agents, you configure them with MCP tools as well, so they can uh, work on long-running tasks, use the tools available uh, to you know, kind of reflect on the tool's uh, response, et cetera, and keep going back and forth until the acceptance criteria is met. Now, once the new code base is there, there's also day two aspect of your workload, right? Uh, be, and, and there also we have agents like SRE agent that autonomously kind of monitor and make sure your um, you know, SLAs and SLOs are met. The huge, a huge caveat here is you as a software engineer are underwriting the risk <laughs> that the changes that you're introducing to you know, application or whatever or any digital experience uh, is on you. Uh, so it's very important to validate and verify what these agents are yep. building. So what I've heard to summarize is you first need to understand the task from what, whatever the requirement is, uh, really be able to take all, compress all of that data in which we are calling context engineering these days, get all the data together that is needed for the task to be done, and then go into actual development, which could be an army of agents, then go into um, a testing and other things, right? Um, and then you go into deployment, which could also be agents, and then uh, monitoring uh, beyond deployment, which could be SRE agents and other things like that. So just imagine every single software development lifecycle um, step would could be one or multiple agents doing different tasks. Did okay. I get that right? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Great. And now let's get concrete, right? So you have this AI tour keynote, uh, you know, site or whatever you want to call it, or agents that you want to create, right? So what I've done here is, you know, first I understood your need, hopefully, <laughs> and I'm going to use 
agents like Researcher Agent, and we're going to ask it to create a PRD. And the cool thing with Researcher Agent uh, that's part of M365 Copilot is it uses my work's context. And here you can kind of see that it created this rich product requirements document. And I'm going to take this and break it down with acceptance criteria and assign it to agents. Now, this is where you know we can help. I have uh, a few sites. AsyncLoom.com is one of the main uh, sort of sites that you can go to, and we'll have the link in the description. And here you have you know an army of agents that you can use on Azure. And it actually, like if you go to GetAGU.com, that's the first site here that I have a link for. Um, you can essentially you know, customize, you, you can first kind of see all the agents that are available, mm -hmm. uh, the synchronous agents, as well as the asynchronous agents. We have GitHub Copilot coding agent, you know, Devin, Replit. And here you can, there's a setup guide so you can configure it for your repo and kind of how to get started with. Um, and then you, if you already have an existing repo, you can go and get uh, customized instructions for that repo. So you can go to, you know, github.com, you know, your repo and change hub to AGU. Uh, agent unlock is what it meant, what it means. Um, you can get customized instructions. For example, here I have a repo called Snippy, and you can kind of see how you can customize uh, that or configure that repo for, in this case, uh, Cognition Devin. Um, now, similarly, um, in your case for for this AI tour, um, you can actually take an existing template, and I have another site, AIFoundry.app. Uh, again, you can go to asyncloom.com and you can, you'll can you see that as one of the cards here. And he, in in AI Foundry template, you can essentially take a template, like let's say get started with chat, because I'm assuming you want like a brand ambassador. Uh, yeah, you know. like that can ask before and after questions That's after right. we're on stage. Yeah. yeah. So you can take a template like this and you can configure and customize it for your specific scenario. So you just come here, you describe your scenario, um, what kind of theme you may want. Uh, it to be, and then you can break down into uh, tasks, or you can just uh, go one shot and assign it to one of these coding agents, um, and you just have to kind of configure the agents. Okay, let me contextualize this. Yeah. So for for this keynote, let's say I have four demos that I want to make, sure. which is what the researcher came back with as well, right? right? Yeah. The three or four demos I want to make, I go in and here in the get started with chat, I uh, put all of my four demo information in here, right. and then SWE agents would fire up and select one of those to, to start, like maybe coding agent can go ahead and start working on one of my demos or all four of my demos, and then I go tweak after. That's right. That's it. You got it. And, and you... And, and you can kind of see that, uh, you know, even let's say, even before we assign this, let's say you want to see a, a mock-up of this, like maybe you want to visualize the pro, uh, PRD, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can go to GitHub Spark, github.com slash Spark, um, and you can kind of see that it quickly, you know, built something here based on just based what on we that. Yeah, about. yeah the, these are the four yeah. demos I would do. And That's this perfect. is code too, and you know, this is actual yeah. code that you can take and you can from here assign to GitHub Copilot coding agent or other agents. Because this has more context. Again, right. context yeah. engineering. Yeah. More more data that we can provide it, it'll do a better job at creating the code. Yeah, and and, and as these agents are working, uh, we also assigned it to uh, Devin, for example. And as these agents are working, you want to be able to align them, you want to be able to audit them, um, You have and you want to have a delightful experience while doing this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I do think like, uh, you know, as software engineers, we have to, we're probably going to be working with six or seven agents at the same time. Yeah. And we have to be even more embedded with the user needs. And, you know, you may even want to go on a walk to really reflect on the new context that you yeah. want to engineer, right? Yeah. Uh, and while you're on the walk, you may want to, you know, monitor these agents. So we have a Teams app here. Uh, so you can kind of see here, you can either download it and upload it to your Teams, or you can have your admin install it in your Teams. And with this Teams app, you can actually um, kind of monitor the status of the agents or you can assign new tasks to the agents. When I'm on the walk. When you're on the walk, that's right. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. Uh, so, so these background agents uh, you know, can also work, for example, as part of your GitHub Actions workflow. Yeah. So we have here a GitHub Actions workflow that you can essentially uh, configure as part of your repo. So every time maybe a commit goes out, you know, you can kind of check the unit test code coverage. And if it's not you know, optimal, you can have, uh, in this case, Codex, you know, add more uh, tests mm -hmm. to improve co code coverage. Or you can 
you know, while you're working, you know, in GitHub Copilot, you can have background agents. Uh, and unlike our competitor, we actually give you flexibility to have, you know, multiple uh, agents, whether it's GitHub Copilot coding agent or Replit or Devin uh, or Codex. So you can pick the agent that you want uh, to work from GitHub Copilot, and it can work on five or six tasks. And we have instructions here for how to configure that. Or from N365 Copilot, you can also work with these agents from there. Great. Okay, so what you've done here with the async um, Loom site is brought some of that software development lifecycle agents together. So where we started from, you can see all of those kind of connected and how to get started with them on this site. We will put the links for this in the description below. Um, all right, how do you want to um, want to summarize all the things yeah. you just said? So in summary, I think there's going to be a lot more software engineers. I think how we do uh, work, it isn't just about writing code to introduce changes. Uh, it is really about you know understanding the user needs and as you said, context engineering. Mm -hmm. And also on the other end, verifying, validating, because you are underwriting the risk <laughs> of whatever you put out there. It's in your name at the end of the day. So make sure that's good. And and, and use agents, you know, throughout the SDLC lifecycle, uh, you know, including day two aspect, right? SRE agent and things like that. Uh, so that output poor software engineer goes way up, 10x, even 100x. Yeah. With that, we hope you enjoyed this episode and we are looking forward to hearing what you think about software engineering with the, in the age of AI. Uh, drop us in the comments below and we would love to hear your thoughts. And with that, thank you so much. We'll see you next time.